Shin is reclining against the stacks of cages as you approach, watching the display of a small trit player on the table. The trit displays the shimmering form of a dancing woman weaving her way through a crowded club. It seems to have been filmed via a portable recorder or possibly someone's cyber eyes. Draped in wild clothing that scintillates with light and holograms, the dancer slips through the crowd like a living mercury. Like living mercury, every step and evasion is effortless. You watch the dancer weave her way up a flight of stairs, moving towards the second floor balcony. As she ascends the stairs, her hand starts to crackle with energy, and points of light trace across her neck, shoulders, and spine. In the glitter and flash of the club light lighting, no one seems to notice. For a split second, she looks back at the camera's point of view, smiling seductively. She's gonna kill someone, right? Shin gestures towards the holographic display, smiling broadly. Keep watching, it's about to get good in a few seconds. <laughs> yes, she's gonna kill someone. The dancer arrives at the top floor, moving towards a particular table. The table's occupants, triad members, judging by the tattoos, rise from where they are sitting and begin to draw weapons. The expressions indicate they are familiar with the dancer and intend to kill her. At this point, the dancer explodes into motion. She bobs and weaves out of the way of their gunfire, her fingertips flinging electricity and fire in long arcs. She seems to dance in, dance at and around the triad soldiers. Each step and beat causes an explosion of force that scatters tables and drinks. Wreathed in the elements, the woman cuts through the triad members in an effortless uh, purvein of destruction. The recording ends and Shen straightens up. I could watch Lucky Ping at work all day. I don't know how she works her magic, but it's a beautiful and terrifying thing to behold. Really glad she's with the Yellow Lotus and not an enemy syndicate. Ah, a friend of yours. That's right, she's a red pole in her own right, and a steel arm loose cousin. Scary woman, but if she likes you, she'll stick with you through anything. Shen leans over the display table, palms flat on the surface. What can I do for you? Uh, tell me more about your crew. With folded arms, Shen regards you with some suspicion. We are fairly private people. Generally, when I get asked a question like that, I figure it's because someone's looking for something to use against me. Shen's expression softens after a moment, however. Well, you've been a decent person so far. I guess I can tell you some. White Ming and I started our cell. Grandfather Wo took him to Wo Wudang a year or two before he did the same for me. He made it clear that he expected repayment in kind when we were old enough, and since the Yellow Lotus was his organization, we joined up. At first, it was mostly small time stuff, shell games on street corners, stuff like that. We picked up a new member after about six months, and things started to change. Freedom C. A dwarf kid, absolute murder with twin pistols, the kind of focus I can bring to bear in Kung Fu, that's how he shoots. Shen grins crookedly. His parents named him Freedom and sent him to the UCAS to live with an uncle. Guess they wanted him to be really American or something. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> Beyond that, there's Yang, the lawyer you saw me talking to before. The four of us do a pretty cozy business between jobs for Steel Arm Lu and Kindly Chang. It's not like we're in charge of much, but it beats starving, yeah? Uh, do you like working for the Yellow Lotus? Like has nothing to do with it. I have debts like I have debts to Grandfather Wo and I intend to pay them. I guess they're a good enough syndicate. We waste a lot of blood and money fighting the red dragon though. Can't say I like can't say that I like that end of the business since since it seems like such a huge waste. If it went for grandfather, I might see about getting White Ming, Steel Arm Lu and Lucky Ping to break away. Maybe start our own thing in turf that's not quite so fought over. Lifting one hand, palm up, Shen smiles faintly, but I can't leave him. I owe, me I owe him everything. Why would you split off at all? I've heard a lot of talk between the Yellow Lotus vanguards and Incense Masters. They're dead set on eliminating the Red Dragons, despite the risk. When that kind of talk get tossed around, nobody's safe. It leads to all-out warfare. Last time that happened, the White Jade Brotherhood got wiped out completely. It's just bad strategy to try to wipe them out. It's all this old rivalry between the Elders, and it has nothing to do with the business end of things. Old Vendettas get you killed, even if they're not yours. 
Right. Show me what you've got. I just want to like... Oh, hey, Ares Monosword. Chinese War Sword Centurion Laser Axe? Laser Axe! Has two welding lasers focused along the cutting edge. <laughs> laser axe. A laser axe. Oh, we get eight armor. Uh, mystic armor. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna. I don't have key casting. I don't have chi casting. Well, wait a minute. Oh, no, I can afford it, but I can't use it. We can upgrade our armor. It costs about 3,000 bucks. Maximum... Hey, there's a thing there. Maximum law. Law raises his VR goggles as you approach. His eyes are deep brown, surrounded by premature wrinkles. He squints in the light, blinking. He seems at a loss for words. Hey, yes, you can see. I, uh, his voice is subdued. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, put anyone in danger. A lesson learned. Don't worry about it. He pulls his VR goggles back down. I guess shadow running is a darker business than I thought. <laughs> uh it's an ugly world. Stay out of it if you can. Yeah, I don't want anything to do with shadow running anymore. I'm not like you, SCKC. I'm not some carnivore. I don't want to be one. <laughs> Fair enough. Law looks pensively around the docks. I want to get out of here, SCKC. I want to get on to something bigger. Oh? Rain drizzles, torn tarpaulins flap weakly, and dogs creak. The odors of garlic, sizzling fish, ginger, onions, raw sewage, and industrial effluent mingle in the heat. This place is kind of a shithole, isn't it? Ah. Uh, well, like you said, it's a stepping stone. There are better places than here, that's for sure. Like you said, it's a stepping stone. Yeah, it is. And dealing tech is how I'm gonna get out. I guess that makes my strategy clear. Law breaks into a rascally grin. Welcome to Law's Technology Palace, SKZ. What useless junk can I sell you? Alright, let me just check his shop. Oh man, look at this stuff. Fairlight Excalibur. Six programs, three S ESPs. Five evasions, 300 life points. Hey, this thing's got even more life points, but less movement. Uh, and then street operative, we get new armor. Alright, see you later. Long live the boom. Cred stick. 48 bucks, yeah! Found 50 bucks just lying on the ground. Uh, we're not going to the Mahjong Parlor just yet. There is Captain Jomo. Or maybe I should go to the Mahjong Parlor right now. Let's go to the Mahjong Parlor right now. Let me save first. Oh, my whole team's here. Alright, let's have another talk with Kindly Cheng. Kindly Cheng is in the midst of emptying two plastic shopping bags when you enter. She places the contents in a pile on her mahjong table. Two liquor bottles without labels, a box of her thin black cigars, an assortment of individually wrapped gourmet chocolates, and a large caliber pistol with electrical tape wrapped around its grip. <laughs> ah, good, you're here. She finishes with the plastic bags and throws them to the floor. It seems like forever since we saw each other. Uh, welcome back. Was your trip worthwhile? 
Her voice is filled with a rusty energy. Yes, my darling, yes. I've met with several contacts within my network who referred me to others in neighboring cities. Regardless of how far technology moves forward, tradition demands that some things be handled face to face. I have returned with information that will lead you to the plastic faced man, the man who killed Raymond Black. Ah. Uh... Excellent. While you were gone, we uncovered a relationship between Josephus, Josephine Sang and Raymond Black. The tried woman's eyes narrow. Did you? And what was it you uncovered? We've been lied to all this time, Wu and me. Raymond Black is actually Edward Sang. Raymond Black is Josephine's son? Her brow furrows. Yes, you were lied to for a long time. This explains where he went when he disappeared years ago. Seattle. Any idea why he why he disappeared? No, just that he went missing after Josephine completed rebuilding the Ward City. That was in the early 30s. Her face twists into a mask of disgust. You realize what this means, don't you, my sweet? That inbred little goat whore was cold enough to have her own son executed. Hmm. Even more reason to find the plastic-faced man. What have you found out? Everything you need to move forward. She grabs a bottle and opens it. I know the identity of the plastic-faced man. His name is Li Tai Long. And he's... Li Tai Long. Tai Long. Tai Long um, is um, like Tai. It's like a like, uh, sky dragon or like supreme dragon or like anyway something dragon. And he's an independent contractor, a trusted, deniable asset who handles all of Josephine Sang's more delicate operations off the books and away from the public eye. The plastic-faced man is her shadowy right hand outside of the corporation. Cheng doesn't bother with the glass. She takes a long pull of the stinking bottle and wipes her mouth with the back of her hand. And I know how to find him, too. I've made contact with an information broker, Zhao Xi, who works out of an abandoned night market in Sakip Sha Mei. And the Xing House Court. It's not hard to find. She takes another pull on the bottle. Zhao Xi has gained access to the plastic faced man's complete itinerary where he'll be, who he'll be with, and what sort of security he'll have the works. She grins, glassy eyed. She can use it to perform an extraction. Grab him and find out what he knows. Did you find out why Lee has a face made of plastic? It's not just his face. Li Tai Long's entire skull is synthetic. What? How? How? The entire skull? How do you do that without messing up the brain? Because the brain is in your skull? How do you how do you replace the whole skull? Like how do you wait a minute? Your eye sockets. How do you get get your eyes out of this? <laughs> oh, I guess you replace the eyes with cyber eyes. Hold on. How do you <laughs> the whole skull? <laughs> how do you get the brain out without squishing it? Um, he designed he's designed himself to be the perfect corporate operative. He's installed a unique piece of headwear. You see. It allocates and compartmentalizes client-related memories so that they can be erased upon the completion of a job. And as an, and, and as an added security measure, this cortical implant will wipe his memory if it detects that he's been captured. Wait, so what's the point of capturing him? So we need a way to circumvent the implant. Exactly. Unless you can find a way around the cortical implant, you have no way to extract the information he has and figure out what happened to Raymond Black. She circles the mouth of the bottle with a finger. Now I've done my part in this, my darling. You need to find a way to neutralize that device. 
Okay. Isabel interjects, her voice breaking slightly as she speaks. I know a way. I've heard of something like this before. I met someone in the Matrix who had to shrink a similar memory wipe implant. Who had to shirk a similar memory wipe implant once. It was a requirement for a big job and she pulled it off. Keep talking. Her handle is Dreamland and I know where to find her. All that we have to do is convince her to give up the secret of how she did it. Okay, Isabel and I will go see Dreamland before we hit the information broker. Then we grab the plastic faced man. No matter who you choose to help you snatch this guy, I'm gonna be there with you when you extract the information from him about Raymond. Wu crosses his arms across his chest and tilts his head towards you. You got it, Simon? Ah, if you want, Nancy. We should all be there. Gobbit eyebrows. Gobbit's eyebrows arch high. I know that I want to see this. Very good, my darlings. Now listen to me. After you get what you need from the plastic faced man, I want you to end him. You understand? Sure. The triad boss taps the table with a finger. I need to send a very clear message that this is what happens when you mess with Kindly Chang's operations, with Kindly Chang's people. Josephine takes Night Jar, I take her plastic faced man. What if we convert him? What if we make him work for you? What if we like, instead of killing him, we take him? We keep him? Once you snatch the plastic faced man, Zhang will know something is happening, and events will unfold very quickly after that. You'd best close out any pressing business you have before heading to Sakip Mei to see Zhao Xi. Do you understand? Um. Yeah, I get it. Once we set the ball rolling on this, there's no turning back. That's right, my darling. No more side jobs and no more dalliances. Kali Cheng wraps on the mahjong table with an imitation ivory tile. Be sure that your affairs are in order before you head to see the information broker. Alright, so this is the point of no return. Well, obviously, I'm going to do all the side missions first, right? 